The year 2021 is in full swing and most people, if not all, are already trying to go after their New Year's resolutions and their goals. For those of you who are Christians and may have had remaining in God, abiding in Jesus more, um, learning more about God, being closer to the Lord, strengthening your intimacy with the Lord on your New Year's resolution list, then this video is just for you because today we are talking about the vine and the branches, what Jesus spoke about in John 15. Let's go. What's up guys, this is Shanella tuning in from Kingston, Jamaica. Let me just switch my dialect right now, I'm going on the level part so I'm Now in this video, I'm going to be talking on several pointers. I'm going to be talking about the why Jesus called us to dwell in him or to abide in him. Uh, we're also going to be talking about what are the fruits in which he calls us as Christians to possess because he did say in John 15 that in order to show that we are true disciples of him, that we must possess these fruits or qualities or characteristics throughout our daily walk. We're also going to be talking about some of the works that he did that mirrored some of these fruits. And finally, we're going to be talking about how um, we can make an intentional move into possessing these fruits, into walking throughout our Christian life in a true way, in a Bible-believing way, the way in which he called us. We are about to read what he is instructing his disciples literally just a couple minutes um, before the Pharisees and the guards came to arrest him. And so let's start off with verse 1 from chapter 15 and it reads, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be given, so that it will be even more fruitful. And so in this passage of scripture, Jesus is using some very intense adjectives I would say to describe the relationship he has with the father who he describes as the gardener and when you think about a gardener you know a gardener is somebody who tends to a garden he plucks out the weeds he water the, waters the plants he's tending to the plants so that there can be fruits so that the plants can live and so Jesus is using that representation of a gardener tending to his garden as um, how, the, how the father tends to us as his people. And so Jesus is saying that from that garden, you know, from the father, he is the true vine. And we are the ones who are being planted in that garden that needs to bear the fruit. Now let's continue with verse 3. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus has made a, a quite an establishment here in the scripture. He said, listen, my father is the gardener of this entire garden. I am the true vine and from me should spring forth branches. And we as Christians are those branches. But here's the thing, in order for us to bear fruit, you know, in order for us to bear fruit in our Christian walk, we have to be able to can abide in Jesus. That's the only way. And that's what Jesus is saying here. There's no other way in which you can say you're walking this Christian road unless you are making an intentional purpose to remain and abide 
in Christ. And so if you're asking the question, Chanel, how exactly do I bear how exactly do I bear these fruits? How exactly do I remain in Jesus? How do I make this make an intentional step? towards doing that. I'm going to get to that point in just a minute, but before I do, I want to quickly touch on what exactly these fruits are because if, especially if you are new if you are a new convert, you may not understand what exactly I mean by saying fruits. You know, you may exactly not understand what Jesus is saying here in this passage of scripture. So, I want you to think of fruits as characteristics of a person of a personality you know you have your personality and I can say oh I I am very quirky but I'm also very kind and I love to help people these are characteristics of my personality and so in a way I can call them their fruits of who I am and so when the Bible is talking about the fruits of the Spirit and when Jesus is saying that you have to bear fruit um, this is also what he means this can also be taken in that context to say this is what he means and so i want us to turn to galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 23 i believe so that we can have an actual an actual biblical answer to what the fruits of the spirit are and so galatians 5 22 says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace forbearance kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control and jesus is saying that all of these qualities all of these traits must be portrayed throughout your life as somebody who is abiding and remaining in him and you can only acquire these traits by remaining in him you can only do spiritual good by abiding in jesus christ every single day that's literally the only way the bible says that he is the way the truth and the life and you cannot jump over the wall to enter the kingdom you have to go through him and so one thing you have to understand is that whenever you're coming into this christian walk it's going to be a walk which challenges you which changes what you are commonly grown to be what your flesh man wants you to do what the world wants you to do in the same scripture in Galatians, it's actually instructs us how we're supposed to live our lives. It says in verse 16, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want and so whenever you find yourself grappling with this ask yourself um which side am i currently fulfilling which fruit am i walking in am i walking in what the world wants me to be am i portraying those qualities am i portraying those things and am i am i abiding in the what the world wants me to abide in or am i abiding what Jesus instructs me to in abide in and it's very clear because in certain situations you'll find yourself not wanting to be kind and that's where you see that conflict happening where your spirit the Jesus in you is saying be kind in this situation but you the flesh person is saying I don't want to and so this is what Galatian is saying right here that there will always be a conflict between the two and it's through Jesus in which we are able to can bear these fruits in the hard situations it's very easy to be kind and faithful and good when everything is going well but the true fruit really shows up when you're in the hard situations when you're in the nooks and the crannies and you have to make a conscious decision on how you're going to answer to a situation you know what I mean so Jesus said time and time again in the book of John um, in chapter 14 he actually said that a true sign of his disciple is one who will do the works that he did and even more um, because he was going to be given up and be crucified and everything and so he was saying to the people that hey um, a true disciple of mine is one who do the works that I did you know is one who portray the same qualities or fruits that I did but let me just highlight a few of those works that Jesus did one he was constantly praying for the sick and um, performing healing 
for the sick. He was constantly doing miracles. He was preaching the gospel. He was constantly trying to renew people to God, to fix the relationship with God. He was doing deliverance. He was gathering other people. Like he was fully on doing the active work of Christ. And so Jesus is saying a true disciple of mine will be portraying these works, will be doing these works, and they will be doing so with the fruits of my spirit, of Jesus' spirit. So he'll be performing miracles with gentleness and faithfulness and kindness and with self-control, you know? He'll be in this relationship with self-control. He'll be in this situation with love and joy and peace. And so we are called to portray these qualities and traits of Jesus. So now down to the question of how exactly do we remain in Jesus? And this is going to be something that has to be an in intentional and conscious decision. If there's one thing 2020 has taught me, it's that you make time for God because you want to. We were literally at home every single day and I don't know about you, but the, I went weeks without fully making time for God, but yet still I was at home not doing anything. And that has shown me the true heart of a man. The flesh side of you really doesn't want to do what the Lord has called you to do. But it's a requirement. If you want to grow in your faith, if you want to be a true disciple of Christ, you have to be able to abide in Jesus. And so abiding in Jesus looks like firstly, believing in Him and in His Word. It sounds simple, but oftentimes I feel like people are just accommodating the thought of Jesus, but when it comes on to actually actively believing in Jesus, there is some conflict. Because believing in Jesus also translates to doing the things he said. Jesus says, if you love me, then obey my commandments. Which means if, you're, if, if you only really love him when you've actually obeyed. You only really love him when you've actually made intentional move to obey you know it's not a matter of trying to struggle with this sin and constantly sinning no because a sinner sins as bishop td jake said and he doesn't feel anything but when a christian sins he feels some type of way and that's because you're coming from a place where you are sincere and so believing in jesus and actually believing in his word is one of the first steps to abiding in him the next one is that you want to ensure that you're also obeying his word and like i said before it ties in with believing in him because you obey his word because you believe in him and you love him that's what jesus said the Bible has many call to actions involved in it. Jesus is constantly saying, go out and preach my gospel. So you need to kind of ask yourself, like, where are, where are you falling short in your walk, in your walk with God? Are you evangelizing to your friends? You know, um, are you making an intentional purpose to be delivered from something? You know, are you helping people? Are you praying for people? These are questions that you as Christians have to ask yourself so that you can know exactly how you need to align yourself with Jesus and where you need to, you know, address that relationship. But the next step to abiding in Jesus is actually taking the time to just get to know him. So, you know, there's 24 hours in a day, half the time we're at work and next time we're at home feeling some type of way. You won't learn about Jesus and the work of God and who God is if you don't make a decision to allot the time for that. So just like how you had to go to school so that you could learn about what you want to be, it's the same process of learning more about God. There is literally no other way you're going to learn about God if you're not actively reading your Bible, if you're not actively attending church, if you're not actively taking the time out to worship him to be with him because it's going to be in those intimate moments where God is going to let himself be made known to you you can only listen to a person's testimony for so long but you have to have that interaction and relationship for yourself so that God can become real to you in your life so you have to be intentional with every single thing abiding in Jesus and remaining in him and bearing the fruits and doing the works that he has has called us to do only comes from making a conscious and intentional decision um, to spend that time with him, to know him, to learn about him.
So when you are fulfilling these um, these requirements, when you're making the time, when you're praying, when you're abiding, when you're reading the word, when you're going to church, when you are making an intentional decision to know God more, then verse 7 of chapter 15 can be fulfilled where Jesus said, when you ask of my Father whatever you desire, he will grant it to you. Because naturally, when you're remaining in somebody, you will become one with the person. And so what this person does that desire you will now desire and so this in this case what the Lord desires for your life will automatically become your desires and through that you will be granted the desires of your heart and so if you're trying to make an intentional move this year to be closer to God to get more in his presence to know him more these are things that you have to keep in mind it's all about making a conscious and intentional decision that's it for today's video guys i really really hope that it was impactful i hope that you guys were feeling refreshed and renewed and reminded about some of the important things that we tend to forget such as bearing the fruits of the spirit such as doing the works that the lord has called us to do if you have any questions or if you'd actually like to question anything that i said in this video feel free to leave a comment down below and let's have a conversation about it also give this video a like and share it with your friends so that other people can be edified just like how you were thank you so much again for the support and continue to stick around for new videos from me every Sunday and Friday from now on God's willing <laughs> thank you guys this was Chanella and I am now tuning out from Kingston Jamaica bye